Okay, let's look at some silicon reverse engineering techniques. Uh, this is a uh, movie of a set-top box that I tore down recently. I uh, cut the cable and the uh, cable company told me to just keep the set-top box. I guess I got so many of them. And we crack it open. You can see a Broadcom chip and it's in a package known as a Baradai lip chip. The actual silicon here sits on a substrate. Bear die because basically we're just looking at the back of the silicon die here. And there's a engineering reverse engineering technique called back die uh, uh, thermal analysis. And uh, you can actually see what's going on in the semiconductor without doing anything destructive to it. So in this video we'll just uh, review how that's done. And uh, surprisingly inexpensive tools that are required to do it these days. Okay, so if you want to see the activity of silicon dye, you can actually just image the back of it with a thermal camera. Now this camera doesn't have a phenomenal resolution, but it's actually really well suited to the task. It's from a company called Infrared. This one has an adjustable uh, focus on it, which is very handy because you need to get very precise focusing. And then you need to draw the focus in with a, a macro lens adapted from, uh, from it for a CO2 laser. You can put that onto there. It's obviously just 3D printed. And you got to hold it. I'm just using a magnetic uh, dial indicator. And then I printed an adapter uh, with my 3D printer. And we put it all together. And uh, you can then uh, image the die as it's uh, acting. And uh, you get a sense what's going on in the silicon. And uh, from there, uh, you get a good idea what's going on without actually destroying the die. The typical way to do this is to take this off the board. Uh, de-encapsulate the uh, substrate which is holding it and uh, look at the dye on the other side but you can't get activity with this approach uh, you can actually get the activity uh, sorted out uh, which is very very handy so here we have the camera being held with a dial indicator it's very stable the reason for all this faff is that the uh, depth of focus when you have a macro lens on uh, is very shallow and you need to basically hold the camera uh, pretty precisely for it to focus and let's just now pop over to some of the images you can capture with this setup. All right, well, here's a typical image. The uh, product's turned on, and uh, you can sort of see indistinctly. That we're basically seeing right through the silicon die, uh, and it's actually still in operation, and that's kind of neat. Uh, so, for example, this block here is almost certainly a serial deserializer, high-speed links, for example. Uh, the edges of the die almost always uh, are the actual, I, what they call the I.O. ring with all the I.O.s here. In it. Now, the colors aren't very bright because at the moment this chip is uh, just pulling itself out of reset. Not too much activity is going on to it. Uh, but, you know, we can now actually sort of tease out the, uh, the what's going on in the die. Uh, this is especially interesting for like Broadcom, for example. You know, the Raspberry Pi uses uh, Broadcom quite extensively, but they have what's known as dark silicon that uh, basically areas of the die that don't get turned on because they decided not to use the product. It would actually be a way of teasing out those areas. Now, you can actually see the part number, of course. It looks like you know it's hotter for some reason. Of course, that's not true. Um, there's one thing about uh, thermal cameras you need to know is that when you change the reflectivity of, it, of the object called the emissivity, uh, the thermal camera actually falsely registers that as a uh, hotter temperature. Uh, however, the other stuff below uh, is very much teasing out what's actually on the die. And if you follow a lot of the videos I do, I do tear down silicon, you, you notice I take uh, optical photographs. But uh, this technique is powerful in that you can actually see what's going on. A little less distinct, of course, than an optical image, but still you get a good idea of what sits structure underneath the actual silicon uh, without tearing it apart. Okay, uh, so here's another video. Uh, you can see the, the below the numbers 3 and 5, there's a slight pulsing, uh, and then it sort of restarts and resets. Um, I think the chip actually it's uh, boot locked or something, or it's just going through the boot loader. It sort of heats up here, then it goes into a short boot. I suspect it might have triggered something on the uh, set-top box when we opened it up. It's probably in some sort of security warning mode. Um, however, had it gone a bit further in the boot, we would have seen more of the parts uh, wake up and then uh, come in. So... But there you go, you sort of see it sort of pulsing away in the middle. This is actually something that's very helpful if you have a dead piece of silicon, uh, even the fact that the, fa uh, the silicon is, you know, where it's uh, blinking away, I uh, can give you some indication of where it's getting uh, locked up on the assembly. So uh, hopefully that was an interesting uh, short little video.